This is an Ardide 270. It was released 10 years ago. It's basically an ancient artifact at this point, as far as PC tech goes. I mean, is it even worth trying to play modern games on an old GPU like this? Is it even worth me making this video about it? Or are you watching it? What are we even doing here? Oh, wait, what? It, it, it's good? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, let's do the video thing then. Hello, I'm TechDweeb, how you doing today? Thanks for clicking on the video. This will be a fun video, I think. This GPU was given to me by a subscriber, my new best friend, Digbat. He sent me a bunch of GPUs to test out on my channel. I'll link to the video where I box the stuff that he sent me in the description below if you want to check it out after this video. I have a bunch more to test from what he sent me. Uh, I'm excited to check out that 550Ti, that sad little GT730, but that's not today. Today is all about this R9 270. This is the MSI version of the card, their Twin Frozor model. Oh god, I freaking hate that name. Twin Frozor. I hate seeing it, and I especially hate saying it. Uh, I'm glad they dropped that <laughs> stupid name. The Radeon R9 270 was a mid-range graphics card by AMD, launched in 2013, part of their 200 series, built on the GCN1 architecture. It has 1280 cores, 2 gigabytes of GDDDR5 VRAM, a 900 MHz core clock with a 1400 MHz memory clock and a 256-bit memory bus. The Radeon 200 series were the first AMD GPUs to support the Vulkan API, and we also have the DirectX 12 support up to feature set 11.1, uh, and Crossfire support, <laughs> from back when Crossfire was still a thing. <laughs> oh man, I miss those days. The, the top PC games of 2013 were Bioshock Infinite, Dota 2, Saints Row 4, and the Tomb Raider reboot. So you can expect a mid to high end GPU from 2013 to handle those older games just fine. But what about modern games? 2013 was 10 freaking years ago. Can you still use an R9 270? and have a good gaming experience in 2023? Will there be compatibility issues? Will the old drivers even work? Well, calm down. I'll, I'll get to that if you stop asking questions and let me make the freaking video the way I want to make it. Sheesh. Uh, two quick things first. One is that uh, in my Radeon HD 7870 review, I had several comments saying how the R9 270 is the exact same GPU as the 7870. And then I saw people responding to those people saying that no, the, the, the 7870 is way better than the R9 270 because they have different specs. They don't really. They have the same exact specs, except for two things. The R9 270 has a 900 megahertz core clock compared to the 1000 megahertz core clock of the HD 7870. But the 270 has a 1400 megahertz memory clock compared to the 1200 megahertz memory clock of the 7870. So on paper, they should be about the same performance, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video after we get our benchmark test results. The second thing is I, I know I'm going to get comments about how I should be using the D-Base drivers for this video because they're, they're way better. And I know. I, I know about the D-Base drivers. I have two videos planned specifically about the D-Base drivers. I don't want to use the D-Base drivers here because this video is about the experience that the average gamer will get if they buy one of these things, download the latest drivers from AMD, and just use it to game the way 99% of the people would actually use it. And also, I don't think the D-Base drivers are going to make much of a difference, uh, really. And as you'll see, they're, they're probably not needed. Not for this GPU. And I'll explain that in my upcoming video, though. So, with all that out of the way, without further dilly-dallying, as my Bob would say, let's get this thing into our PC and play some games. Our test setup is the PC that I built in this video, linked below. It has an i5-10400, 16 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 megaflurps, NVMe SSD system drive, and the GPU is... Well, well you, you know what it is. It's an MSI Twin Frozor R9 270, obviously. Starting off, as always, with Lara Croft Simulator 2018. I guess this is becoming a bit of an older game now. It's about four and a half years old at this point, but it'll be a cold day in hell before you pry this game out of my benchmark suite. I guess a new Tomb Raider game would do it. Oh, that'd be nice right about now. <laughs> I think I remember hearing something about a new Tomb Raider game in the works sort of recently. I wonder what Lara Croft's starting outfit will be. 
Oh right, the benchmark. Um, this is running at 1080p, medium settings, and I got an average of 38 FPS. Not amazing super high refresh rate gaming or anything, but it's a slower paced game, a controller game, so this is fine. I guess you could go down to the low settings if you really want more FPS, and the game does look great at the low settings, but I only go down to low if I really need to. I, I enjoyed it like this though, so no reason to go to low for me. If I can enjoy the game at medium, that's what I do, personally. I don't mind gaming at medium at all. It's it's the sweet spot. That's where you get the best performance while still making the game look pretty darn good. I made a whole freaking video about that topic, about how the different quality settings are kind of pointless. I'll link to that video below if you want to check it out after this video. I say if performance is your goal, just go for the medium preset, enjoy the game, and don't fuss too much about it. CSGO ran great, as you would expect. I'm running at 1080p with the low settings for that competitive advantage that I needed my bot matches. And I got 252 FPS on average, which is great. I mean, if you had a 240 hertz monitor, you could definitely use a GPU like this and take full advantage of it. But here's the thing. When I tested the HD 7870, I got only 164 FPS on average. I don't have a really good explanation for that, to be honest, unless there was something weird going on with my system that I didn't know about when I did my benchmark on that GPU or like some driver fig. I, I don't know. I'm using the same driver here. I, I, I might have to look more into that maybe. I mean, the frame rates are all over the place in this game, and it, it really de depends on the map and where you look, so it's, it's hard to compare the FPS of one GPU to another GPU, but rather think of this FPS as a general ballpark figure of wh what you could expect. Yeah, I know this game has a, a benchmark, but I don't care about that. You, you and I both know that you're not here for my hard-hitting data and deep performance analysis. I just play the games, report my findings, and if I come across any important and stuff and I'll, I'll learn about it and make a dedicated video on it for you. <laughs> That's what you can expect from me. Well, that and this. <laughs> Here we have the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with the next gen patch, update, whatever it is. Next gen Witcher 3, which is just the current gen, of course. There's no next gen yet. God, I, I hate the misuse of terminology. That's the biggest plague on the gaming industry. Not the hardware, not the prices, not the games, or the, the stories of the characters. It's the freaking names. Anyways, we're running at 1080p in DirectX 12 mode, so with the all new next gen effects and fidelity, we're running with the low settings, but in DirectX 12, even at low, it looks like a different game than the, the, the original. It's so dang nice looking. And I'm making use of FSR 2 here. The, this is balanced FSR 2, I think. It gave us about 10 extra FPS without much visual difference, so that's what I went with. If you don't like FSR 2, then run with FXAA and you'll get about 10 more average FPS. Our FPS average here was 51 FPS. The game felt just great at these settings. You know, I do these tests, the, these benchmark runs, to figure out the FPS and provide you with the data, but for me, the real test is this. If I'm testing a game, my brain switches into gamer mode and I actually just play the game, forgetting that I'm doing a benchmark test. That's what does it for me. That's what makes me stop and say, oh, w wow, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. Also, I'm, I'm hungry. I wonder if mom saved any of that spaghetti from last night. Go home, burn those clothes, and scrub yourself thoroughly. Yo, sure, sure, but I'll tell you true, no blight could touch me. Sure hope so. Mixing things up, here's some Far Cry New Dawn. This game is on my to play list, I, so I installed it hoping that I'll actually play it. I, I haven't yet. So for now, it's just on my taking up space on my hard drive for no reason list. But I'm hoping that I can put some time in on this one when I cross off some items from my videos to make list and my things to fix around the house list. I, I, I have a lot of lists. A whole list of them, actually. I'm running at 1080p with the low settings and I got an average of 60 FPS. Exactly 60. And look how stable that frame time graph is. Wow, that is so satisfying. This is really solid performance considering how old this GPU is and how good the game looks. I love the Far Cry series. Far Cry Primal is my favorite, but that's because deep down I'm a caveman. Far Cry 6 is amazing. I'm really enjoying that one now, but I think it's because they went back to their roots, like a tropical island. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about New Dawn. Sort of like a Borderlands beats Far Cry 5, I guess. It looks neat, interesting concept at least, but from what I can tell the game is weird. I've got bad knees. 
<laughs> and lungs. A and eyes. Anyway. Actually, I can relate to this guy. If you reach around my back now, I'll reach around yours later. Oh, um. I'm not gonna do a ton of games for this video, so let's cross off the important ones. GTA 5. We gotta do GTA 5. It's our game benchmark standard candle. Everyone benchmarks this game. Everyone wants to know how it runs, which is fine by me because I freaking love this game. Every time I play it for benchmark videos, <laughs> it never ceases to put a smile on my face. I'm running at 1080p with the normal settings, so the low settings, but one thing that I'm gonna start doing whenever the FPS is really high is increase the shadow quality. This is one thing that no one ever talks about <laughs> when you're on low settings. From, from a distance, the game looks good uh, on low settings, but the shadows can get pretty darn gross when they're turned all the way down and you're close to them. L look at the difference that switching the shadows settings makes. This is high shadows with the AMD soft shadows setting, and it, it's a big difference. Worth the FPS hit, in my opinion. I wouldn't enable this if I was really low on FPS. Like if I was under 60, sacrificing shadows is all right to get your FPS up. But when you're running with plenty of FPS, this is one setting that's worth enabling, in my opinion. I got 105 FPS by the end of my gameplay test. It, it looked great, ran great. Uh, wh what more is there to say? And another important game that we need to cross off is Fortnite, of course, running at 1080p with the low settings, epic view distance, and medium shadows. Lots of stutters, of course, because it's Fortnite. Man, for how popular this game is, it's kind of mind-blowing that the developers let it stutter as much as it does. Even on my main gaming PC with a Ryzen 7 5800X and an RTX 3080, especially after an update, this game is just freaking gross with the stutters. I always need to play a match before I actually play, just to get rid of the stutters. Anyways, it's playing fine here in the, the second match on the 270, I ended up getting 91 FPS on average, which is fine, and 43 FPS 1% lows, which isn't great, but it's not a deal breaker or anything. And you can turn those shadows off to get more FPS. I like the shadows though, and, uh, on the lowest settings, but I don't uh, like disabling it entirely. It, it gets pretty ugly without any shadows. So this is how I play it, and that's what you're gonna see. This was a very uneventful match. <laughs> For the longest time, I couldn't find anyone. Then when I found someone, Great. That's that's just great. I freaking suck. Terrific. And on to some God of War. I was curious to know if this game would give us any problems. This game doesn't work on my older NVIDIA GPUs, like the GTX 750 Ti. Both that and this R9 270 support DirectX 12, but the 750 Ti only supports up to feature set 11.0, while the R9 270 supports up to 11.1, which means we can run some of those off-limits games, like God of War. We still wouldn't be able to run fully DirectX 12 games, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and as new games games come out, we'll see a lot more games that don't support anything older than full DirectX 12, but at least this R9 270 can play a, a lot of modern games that many older GPUs can't. As for this game, I was playing at 1080p with the lowest settings, with FSR 2 set to balanced. FSR 2 is miles better than FSR 1. I would rarely use FSR 1 in this game before, I, I'd always just use the resolution scale instead, but FSR 2 is, is great. It's not quite DLSS or anything, but the fact that it can give us such a boost on 10 year old GPUs like this is pretty awesome. I got 47 FPS on average. Without FSR, I was getting like 33 FPS. And it's noticeable, but only just barely noticeable. It's not terrible at all. The game played just fine like this. I enjoyed it. And finally, on to some. This is running at 1080p with the lowest settings, and I actually only got 46 FPS on average. Actually, at first when I was on the Vulkan API, this GPU does support Vulkan, but I only got like 32 FPS there. 
So this is the OpenGL backend. Doom has not been playing nice with these older AMD GPUs that I've been reviewing. This is the exact same FPS that I got on the HD 7870. Uh, considering how well this game is optimized and how well it runs on many of the weaker GPUs that I've tested, yeah, I, I'm starting to suspect that there's something up with this game and the outdated AMD drivers. This is definitely what I'm gonna test when I try out the knee maze drivers. I mean, maybe they'll help us out. Still a fun game though. I, I always enjoy testing this one out. Really scratches that itch for having demon guts splattered all over your face. So, how did the R9 270 do? Well, it did freaking awesome, if you ask me. Even on the old outdated drivers that are not being updated anymore, that, they, they, that didn't hold us back at all. If you have a, a GPU like this, then you've got a competent 1080p low or medium settings GPU that can handle older games like a champ and newer games competently. It's not gonna blow you away or anything, but at the price that you can find these for on like eBay or probably even cheaper on your local market, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a better show for your dough than something like this. Oh, and how does this R9 270 compare to the HD 7870? Well, my benchmark tests put it basically the same. Nearly the same results in Tomb Raider, exactly the same results in The Witcher 3, exact same results in Doom. The results in CSGO were way better on the R9 270, uh, w way better on Fortnite too. Granted, that could be s because of some other factor. <laughs> I'm not using a perfect testing environment or anything. This is an amateur production over here, if you haven't noticed. Still, for those who say the HD 7870 is way better than an R9 270, that, that's not what I found. And when I look online, that's not what I see. I mean, the R9 270 might have a 100 megahertz lower core clock, but practically in the real world, they're basically identical. Come on now. I'd like to thank my good buddy Dingbat for sending over this R9 270. I've got one more video planned for this GPU where I'll test out those community knee maze drivers and see how they compare to the legacy stock AMD drivers. And that video will be coming soon, so get subscribed so you don't miss it. I have lots more GPU reviews coming up, <laughs> more PC tech, more retro game stuff. So if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time. <laughs> There's a big shiny subscribe button right there below the video. <laughs> Call in your name. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. That's it for me. I'm TechTweet. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.